No prey is too small. Here in the Gorongosa National Park in Mozambique, 21-year-old Ricardo Gota is out hunting. But he's not looking for lions or elephants. He's looking to bag insects. This insect belongs to the beetle family, the ground beetle family. If you touch it, it secretes an acidic liquid. Ricardo works with Piotr Nascreki, a Harvard professor. He's here in the park to document the diversity of its insects. What did you find, Ricardo? I found some insects, yeah. In Gorongosa, international scientists work with young locals to find out about Mozambique's rich biological heritage. In recent weeks, Ricardo has caught thousands of insects for the park's team of experts to identify. Three types of insects. Yeah. We have grasshoppers, gafanhotos. Yeah. Okay. The Gorongosa database okay. is still a work in progress. Yeah. It contains information on all the animals and plants found in the park, and that includes insects. They play a key role in the food chain. Ricardo Guta is studying agriculture, but his professor's enthusiasm is contagious, and now he'd like to study coleopterology in the U.S. So another interesting thing about this, this group of grasshoppers, about Pergomorphida, well, first of all, they're always very colorful. After nightfall is when insects come into their own. Professor Nuskreki has set up a light trap based on the principle that moonlight influences insect behavior. Believing the artificial light is the moon, the insects begin to spiral so they remain parallel to the light source. It is insects who actually run the world. Mm -hmm. uh, they are some of the most important elements of almost any ecosystem, mm -hmm. uh, almost any terrestrial ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, they provide a number of services without which we wouldn't be able to function. So things like pollination, you know, all these moths, mm -hmm. Without them, all the trees and plants without, uh, around us wouldn't be able to produce fruit. The people who live near the park have other concerns, but the next day we get to see how they're starting to benefit from the protected area. Locals used to live mainly from poaching. Now they have regular jobs. A wealthy American donated $40 million to the national park in hopes to boost tourism. Schools and hospitals are under construction, and a new research laboratory has also been completed. As we drive deeper into the park, we come across elephant dung. Elephants are returning to the region. The civil war in Mozambique in the 1980s wiped out the local animal populations. Slowly but surely, they're coming back. Even while the Gorongosa Park was shut down and abandoned, the insects never left. Ruins make an ideal habitat for them. But now they're facing another threat. Ricardo Guta takes us to his village. On the way, we pass logging trucks. Most of the timber is destined for China. Ricardo hates to see the widespread destruction of his country's forests, but he knows how expensive electricity is, which is why locals depend on wood fuel. I think we're running the risk of losing our biodiversity. Too much forest is chopped down for wood fuel. Generally speaking, people don't have enough respect for nature.
Back at headquarters, the insect hunters are working tirelessly. Today, they're setting up nets. The researchers want to find out more about the feeding patterns of bats. They make the most progress at night. Jen Guyton, an expert on bats, is using an instrument to identify sounds that human ears can't normally hear. Now she's angry, though. This is five. Oh, no. No, no that, that was a warning call. The recordings are highly informative. Can you hear anything? Nothing. Gorongosa is the perfect place to study this because we have a high diversity of bat species, a high diversity of insect species, and we're surrounded by areas that suffer from malaria and also where people grow crops. So it's an ideal place to study the interaction between bats and insect species that plague humans. Soon she'll release the bat back into the wild, but first it will have its picture taken. That looks like he's hitting it. Well, I mean, he's hitting the laser, but... The scientists are counting indigenous species in the park. I like this one. Mm -hmm. this one. We're told that scientists are only aware of about 10% of existing insect types. In coming years, the researchers in Gorongosa Park will likely discover thousands more, thanks in part to Ricardo and his net.